All right, welcome back to another one of our film reviews. Today, we are breaking down Steelers rookie tackle Broderick Jones, his performance against the Tennessee Titans. Look, finally, this guy gets a start, put on a really nice game. We're going to highlight a few of his better plays, some of his under-the-radar plays that really help propel the Steelers to victory. As always, if you appreciate this content, give us a like, give us a comment with any feedback you might have. But without further ado, let's jump right into the film. All right, we're going to start with the running play right here. And this is a really cool design by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And look, I know a lot of Steelers fans are going to say, cool design, Matt Canada. Uh, I know a blind, a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. But here we go. Up front, the Steelers are basically having their entire offensive lineman work to their left, our right right here, and kind of create this action of getting everybody on the defense working that way. They're going to bring the backside tight end around to block right here but normally how this play works is everybody goes this way you have the tackle working up to the linebacker everyone works up kind of like that the tight end comes and kicks out the defensive end but the titans have a really good game plan to stop that basically what they do with the titans do is they work this guy inside but you'll watch broderick jones here he actually slow plays it then washes the tight end inside and the tight end loops around to pick up the linebacker this is a really great design really great execution by the steelers let's check out how it goes or you can see everyone there working to their left, right? You can see the tight end coming around. Look at Broderick Jones. See how he slow plays it, then washes the defensive end inside? This is awesome stuff. So basically what the Steelers decided is they didn't like the tight end here one-on-one -on -one making this block. They said this would not have worked. They liked him better on the linebacker as opposed to the tackle, Broderick Jones on the linebacker, which makes sense. Jones would be a better matchup for the defensive end in this case. But you have to force this defensive end to think Jones is working upfield. Watch how Jones slow plays it here. Slow, 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 and then wash him inside. That is a really savvy play from Jones. I guarantee you this is something they practice all week because this is what the Titans show all the time with their defense. This is how they react to this formation and how they plan to stop this play. But this is a great job by Jones washing him inside. Tight end pulls around, kicks up the linebacker. Really nice run from Najee Harris. These are the kind of things that have been missing from the Steelers' offense. Good design play, good execution. And I think a lot of it has to do with Broderick Jones. This guy's a great athlete. We will show a lot of cut-ups of him doing very nice things with his feet all game against the Tennessee Titans. He's a competitive guy as well. To me, this is what's been missing from the running game. Things like this that put running backs in good position here. They don't have to make three people miss. You don't put tight ends in bad positions, make them block one-on-one -on, -one on defensive ends. Instead, you rely on a young, talented, athletic tackle to get the job done, and he does here. Great work by Jones. Yeah, and like this is a guy that looks like he's getting savvier and savvier as the weeks go on. I think he's turning out to be a really nice player for the Steelers. And now that he's on the field more often, I think we're just going to see him grow and improve like you see here. Something that really kind of isn't necessarily technically too difficult, but it takes a lot of patience, a lot of timing, and a lot of know-how. And that's something that Broderick Jones will get better with as the weeks progress. All right, switching up to a pass protection. And look, if you're going to play tackle in today's NFL, you have to be able to pass block. And there's Jones right here at right tackle. And the Tennessee Titans, you can see in this situation, they got their four defense linemen, one on the left. And then you got one, two, three on the offense's right right here. And their whole point, teams do this structure, is because they want one-on-one -on -one matchups. And anytime you have a rookie in the game, they're trying to get one-on-one -on -one matchups on here. So basically what's going to happen is this defensive lineman is going to work this way. And because he's right here, the guard and center have, or this, excuse me, the center has to check him just to make sure he doesn't work up the field. That means the guard's going to be one-on-one -on, -one on this defensive tackle, which means Jones is going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the defensive end. It creates those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Let's check out how Jones does with it. Right, you can see the defensive lineman work away, and there you can see these one-on-one -on -one matchups. The Steelers actually do a pretty good job. They actually slide their protection to the right, but it's still going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Jones knows he has potentially some inside help, but he's got to pretty much approach it like he's got one-on-one -on, -one on this defensive end. And he does a phenomenal job and completely and totally obliterates him on this rep. Folks, if you're a professional defensive end one-on-one -on -one against a tackle and this is what happens to you, that's embarrassing. Like This is an embarrassing play for number 58 for the Tennessee Titans. Right. This should not happen in the NFL. You see this a lot, like, you know, maybe in college and high school and stuff like this, where a tackle is going up against a really bad player. He just completely not only negates his move, keeps working him upfield, keeps him completely squared. Right. This is unbelievable job by Broderick Jones. Right. You can look at the rest of the defensive line. Right. None of this is happening to him. They're all kind of working around the field. But I tell you what, this is just phenomenal stuff. We're going to show this another time. Look where the other defensive linemen are. They're at least in the middle of pass rushes or getting their hands up or something like this. The defensive end Jones was on is literally blown backwards back up the line of scrimmage, right? This is kind of the thing you usually see at the end of preseason games for guys who aren't going to make the team, right? You know, undrafted free agents, maybe special teams guys trying to get a few reps and they just aren't good enough to play in the NFL. 
That's how bad Jones beat this guy here. This is a phenomenal rep from the rookie. Yeah, Nick, and this is really big for Jones because we all know in a passing situation, if you get too far up the field and you're not engaged, that's a penalty, but that's something Jones has been so good at this year. He's only had one penalty all season, and I think he's done a really good job early on in his career playing some really clean football for a rookie, which is very impressive to me. All right, switching back up to the running game, there is Jones right there at right tackle, of course. The Steelers call what's commonly referred to as a wham-bam blocking scheme here up front. That's what I've been called. A few other teams call it differently, but it's something that was called a lot earlier in the season and in the preseason. Kind of interesting that Matt Canada is calling it now, better late than never, I guess. It's kind of a cool concept. Basically, the whole point here up front is to switch up responsibilities for everybody up front. So this is going to be just a running play this direction right here. Normally, how this was working is you would get the tight end kicking out. You get maybe a double team to the linebacker, maybe a double team here to linebacker, and you get the tackle kicking out. But in that situation, when the, these linebackers up here are all seeing these double teams, they're going to flow and get downhill to stop the run. The wham bam concept kind of just screws up the linebackers trying to create a big play. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to get everybody kind of doing different responsibilities. So Jones is going to work up to the linebacker. The guard's going to pull and kick out the defensive end right there. The center is going to work up to that linebacker. This guard's going to kick out that defensive tackle. You've got this tackle, left tackle right here. It's going to kick out to the defensive end while Darnell Washington, the tight end, pulls right there. So they all block. The same guys get blocked, but they all switch up responsibilities. The goal is to create basically a seam here, just a hole here, same as before, and have Najee Harris run through it. But it's to kind of screw up the flow and the reads of these linebackers right here. Let's check out how this goes down. It's a pretty good looking play here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You can see all these three pullers, right? The guards pulling for the defensive end. The left guards pulling for the defensive tackle. Darnell Washington's inserting for that defensive tackle. You can see the left tackle working out to the defensive end there. Broderick Jones, this is a tough block. Gets on the linebacker, forces him up the field. Really nicely done, right? This is really well executed from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, you can see how it screws the linebacker's reads, right? Because it's a running back to the left. These run, these linebackers right here, their whole job is to basically defend against this running play. But look at the Titans linebackers. They're just kind of frozen in place, right? They don't know exactly where they need to fit. And you can see the hole open up right here. Now, this safety inserts. Running backs, this is your responsibility. You got to make him miss. That's your job. Everybody else is blocked up phenomenally well. Unfortunately, Najee Harris can't make a miss. He goes over the top, ends up only being a limited game. But this is a huge hole by the Steelers up front. And again, credit to Matt Canada. That's something that's not being said a lot these days. But this is a well-timed, well-called, well-executed play up front across the board from the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially Jones. Again, look how much further downfield he is than everybody else. His linebackers forced to flow over the top seven, eight, nine yards. So if he makes a tackle, it'll be well downfield. So good job by him. Great angle, great athletic play. Gets his foot in the ground, cuts him off, gets his hands on him, doesn't hold. All around great work from the rookie there. But I tell you what, Steelers fans, you're starting to see some really good design because this is a big hole. Running back has to make a miss one-on-one -on -one in this situation. He can't. But I tell you what, you see more of this as the season goes on, your offense is going to get better and better. Yeah, Nick, and this is a play perfectly suited for a guy like Jones. A lot of athleticism required, a lot of ground need to be covered to get this block. A guy like Jones, who's so quick for being 6'5", 320, he runs a 4'9", 40 at the Combine. I like to see Canada giving Jones the responsibilities that highlight his athleticism. And I think when we keep seeing plays like this, like you said, eventually the offense will start to click. All right, going the other way now, it's another pass protection rep. There is Jones right there at right tackle, left side of your screen. He is going to be matched up one-on-one -on -one with the defensive end right here. This is a third down and long-ish situation for the Steelers here. And I just want to focus something on how good Broderick Jones is on this play. We'll go through the technique when we watch it live. But Kenny Pickett ends up not throwing a great ball here, ends up being an incomplete pass, and the Steelers have to punt. But it's really a question and an issue of pressure that the Titans generate on Pickett. But it doesn't come from Jones's guy. Jones does a phenomenal effort. And it plays like this make me wonder why the Steelers have waited so long to turn to Broderick Jones. He's got to be their guy going forward. But let's check out how the play goes. All right, you can see the one-on-one. -on -one. Great kick step there. Oh, look at that long arm. I tell you what, this is one of my favorite things for tackles to do here is if you've got a guy at defensive end and you've got him so wide out here, just take your inside arm and just shove him and run him upfield. And that's exactly what he does here. This is classic stuff. Completely blows him past the quarterback. I mean, he's not even in the same zip code as Kenny Pickett right here, right? Look at this. Look at where Jones' this guy is, right? Six, seven yards up the field, five yards to the right of the quarterback. Look at the rest of the defensive lineman. Literally right in Kenny Pickett's face, he gets hit as he throws it. Again, I'm going to go back and freeze frame it right here, folks. 
Look at this. You've got three Titans defensive tackles, defensive linemen, literally right in Kenny Pickett's face, hitting him as he throws it. The rest of the offensive linemen, not a great rep. Look at Jones against his guy. Completely, totally negated, not even close to the play. This ends up being an incomplete pass because it's not a great throw from Pickett. I think if he has a clean pocket, if the rest of the offensive linemen do as good as Jones, this is a touchdown because they got the matchup they wanted one-on-one downfield. Just not a great throw because he's getting hit as he throws it. But again, look at Jones's dominance here. Runs this guy at field and stays with him too. This is the athleticism kind of stuff. Because we look at some other great rookies. DeWan Jones from the Browns is a great example of this. He does a lot of good technical things just like this. But what Broderick Jones can bring to the field is just great foot speed and foot quickness. Because not only does he take his inside arm and shove him upfield, he stays with him too. That's next level kind of stuff. I don't know why the Steelers haven't played Broderick Jones more to this point. That's not really the question here. But with reps like this, and again, I'm going to freeze frame it right here. When you've got one guy doing this good against this defensive line and your rest of your offensive line struggling like this, the guy who's doing good needs to play more, and I hope he does for the Steelers the rest of the way. Yeah, Nick, and outside of one outlier game, Broderick Jones has been averaging out a mid-70 grade in the pass blocking grade all season long. He's looked very, very good. Since week two, he's only allowed two pressures, no sacks this season, no hurries since week two. I think he's been doing very, very good in pass protection, and he's doing a great job keeping Kenny Pickett safe. All right, on this play, we're going to show exactly why Broderick Jones' dominance as a pass protector actually opens up the Steelers' offense even more. There is Jones right there. He's, of course, right tackle. He's going to be one-on-one against this edge defender. But a lot of times in this situation, when you've got a rookie in his game against a situation like this, offenses will use the tight end to chip and help support that rookie and then go into a little sort of check down kind of route right there. Basically, number 83, the tight end, whoever's going to play this position, completely gets negated. He doesn't get involved in the progression. He just because becomes an end of play check down for the quarterback. But that's not what the Steelers do here. They basically still treat it one-on-one, mano we mano in this situation. And Hayward, the tight end, runs a standard route here. And what it ends up doing, and we'll see it as the play progresses, is it actually opens up the receiver down the field, gives Kenny Pickett a clear read. Again, in a normal situation with the rookie, this tight end would have to be here helping blocking. It would not clear up the read for the quarterback. Quarterback probably wouldn't even be able to make this throw. Let's check out what happens here. Again, this is second-order effects of Broderick Jones playing at a high level. Okay, first and foremost, total domination right there. Love the inside hand from Jones right here. Gets into his pass set. See how he sticks his left arm right into the defensive defensive end's chest? And totally, completely negated right there. This is just a clear, absolute, brutal victory. This defensive end for Tennessee. I don't know how long he is for playing in the NFL with reps like this because Jones is absolutely just dominating him. But again, the tight end, he spends no time helping. He immediately goes into his route. You can see exactly where he's going. Kind of a short, quick out right here. And what this does, I'll let this play proceed. Right, you see Deontay Johnson's running a deep corner. You can't see, but there's a corner right here in the flat. If this tight end would have been helping on Broderick Jones's guy right here, this corner would have been able to get deep and take away Deontay Johnson. Again, if I play it towards the end, you can see it. You can see how this corner right here had to cover the tight end. Again, if Jones can't handle his guy, the tight end's going to be here blocking. This corner gets to get depth and get in this throwing lane. Instead, they bring the tight end out. No help on the defensive end right there. Jones is fine. He can handle that without an issue. Corner has to take the tight end, opens up the receiver for a big completion downfield. Again, it's things like this that go unnoticed when you talk about offensive play calling and offensive structure. But this is what quality pass protectors can do. It allows you to put more guys in the routes, which allows you to put more defenders in conflict, which makes it easier for your quarterback. This is why Jones playing more really matters. I think when the Steelers break down this film and look at their execution at times against the Tennessee Titans, they're going to see situations like this and they're going to be like, okay, we've got to keep playing Jones more because he allows us to do more things for our offense and makes number eight look better. I love Jones' performance against the Titans, but I also love the second-order effects he brings to this offense. All right, we're going to end on a play of highlighting Broderick Jones' athletic ability, and again, more things he can bring to the offense. There he is at right tackle. And the Steelers are running sort of a tackle pull concept. We call this dart in sort of a college spread scheme. I'm sure the Steelers have a different vernacular for it. But basically, you're going to get a double team on this defensive tackle up to that play side linebacker. You're going to get double teams inside here. The tight end's job is to cut off this defensive end. And the tackle, Broderick Jones, has to pull and has to kick out this defensive end. This defensive end, in this case, cannot work across his face. He has to create a seal here because if you look at the structure of this design here, the goal between these two guys up front for the Steelers is to create a seal here with, between this defensive tackle and that linebacker. And Broderick Jones has to pull and create a seal here. And that's exactly what the running back has to run through right here. Let's check out how Broderick Jones does. 
right? You can see the pulling. You can see the formulation of the seal right there. Again, this is a nice play by the defensive end. He gets down and compresses the hole. Broder Jones pulls, gets out there in space. And right here, again, it's it's not pretty in terms of technically where he gets his hands, but he doesn't hold. He lets go. I like that. But look where his head placement is because that's what really matters because right there, his head is upfield. At this point, you've created the seal, right? You can see it right there because this defensive end, he can only escape going vertical in this situation. So he has no chance to get to the running back. You can see it right there. Again, you can see the seal form, right? This defensive end did a really nice job until the very end. You see how it goes flat and then tries to go vertical? Can't do that. You got to take Broderick Jones head on. But Broderick Jones does a good job right there, keeping his head vertical at all times. Because this is something teams are going to have to game plan for. When you have a tackle who can pull like this across the formation, you're going to have to game plan your defensive ends on how to play that better. And this is, again, another element of what Jones brings to this offense. Yeah, Nick, and I think you hit on something really important here. Jones athleticism and pass blocking have been his keys coming out of college and into the NFL. But if he can start to mix that athleticism in the run blocking game, as we see here and continue to progress in that aspect, this is going to be a really special player. And as you've kept saying this whole video, a guy that is deserving of much more playtime.